Chapter 11. Democratizing AI to help shape a beneficial human-centric future. Part 1. Now that we have a clearer picture of what a beneficial human-centric future for humanity could look like, let us explore the various aspects of democratizing AI to help shape that beneficial human-centric future. As I have mentioned risks, concerns and challenges of AI for society in Chapter 8, I am sharing some solutions here to counter AI's potential negative impacts. It is also evident that democratizing AI is a multifaceted problem for which a strategic planning framework is needed, along with careful design to ensure AI is used for social good and beneficial outcomes. Furthermore, we cannot democratize AI to benefit everyone if we do not build human-compatible, ethical, trustworthy and beneficial AI and address biases and discrimination in a meaningful way. Given the accelerating pace of AI-driven automation and its impact on people's required skills, competencies and knowledge in the dynamic job market, people need to become lifelong and life-wide learners that can make proactive smart choices about where the needs and opportunities are shifting and where they can make meaningful contributions. Solutions to address AI's potential negative impacts as seen in the previous chapters, there is a strong expectancy and belief that AI and its applications can have a very positive and beneficial impact on humanity if implemented wisely, but also a wariness and circumspection of its potential risks and challenges. In this section, I will outline some of the solutions, countermeasures and antidotes to address some of AI's potential negative impacts and worries. I will start with the Pew Research Center's Artificial Intelligence and the Future of Humans report that prescribes three solutions categories, namely a focus on the global good through enhanced human collaboration across borders and stakeholder groups, implementing value-based systems that involve developing policies to assure AI will be directed at the common good and human centricity, and prioritizing people through updating or reforming political and economic systems that ensures human-machine collaboration is done in ways that benefit people in the workplace and society more broadly. These solutions also tie in with the proposed Massive Transformative Purpose MTP for Humanity and some specific MTP goals discussed in the previous chapter. From a global good perspective, it is proposed that digital cooperation should be used to further humanity's needs and requirements, that people across the globe should be better aligned and have agreement on how to tackle some of humanity's biggest problems through widely recognized innovative approaches and keeping control over intricate human digital networks. This solution is also in line with MTP Goal 6 that focuses on collaborating in optimal human-centric ways to use our growing knowledge base and general purpose technologies in a wise, value-based and ethical manner to solve humanity's most pressing problems and creating abundance for everyone. The same holds for MTP Goal 7 with its focal point on democratizing AI and smart technology from a use and benefits perspective to help society thrive, as well as MTP Goal 9 that addresses the implementation of improved collective sense-making for all of humanity and better alignment with respect to our common goals and visions. I'm also a big proponent of implementing value-based systems and making sure that we have policies that help direct AI for beneficial outcomes. Their proposed solution of building decentralized, intelligent digital networks that are inclusive, empathic and have built-in social and ethical responsibilities is also in line with the above MTP goals as well as MTP Goal 10 that seeks to build local and virtual empathic communities connected via global network with more meaningful work and relationships. MTP Goals 11 and 12 are both also value-based as they are fixed on helping people live more meaningful lives and improving on virtues and character strengths. The third solutions category of prioritizing people through expanding their capacities and capabilities for improved human AI collaboration can be addressed through some significant changes to our economic and political systems to better support humans. The first five MTP goals are geared towards just that through decentralized, community-based and self-optimized governance, a more elastic and direct democracy, a compassionate human-centric society 
and associated incentives that complement and extend the current evolving workplace by rewarding active participation and positive contributions to society and civilization and a dynamically controlled form of capitalism to maximize the benefit to all stakeholders. As outlined in Chapter 8, McKinsey Global Institute's report on Applying AI for Social Good maps AI use cases to domains for social good and discusses how AI solutions can be used for social benefit, as well as how risks or negative impacts can be managed and difficulties can be handled. From a risks perspective, MGI mentions a number of them, which include bias that leads to unjust outcomes, such as machine learning algorithms trained on historical data that are skewed or potentially prejudiced, the difficulty in explaining the outputs from large, complex machine learning models for regulatory use cases, violating privacy over personal information could cause damage, and deploying insecure and unsafe AI applications for social good. Such risks can be alleviated by ensuring that people are kept in the loop through cross-functional teams interceding as appropriate, examining data to detect bias and determine if there is a representation deficiency, having separate dedicated teams that perform solution tests similar to the red versus blue teams in cybersecurity use cases, guiding users to follow specific procedures to avoid them impulsively trust AI solutions and having AI researchers developing methods to enhance model transparency and explainability. In order to scale up the use of AI for social good, they recommend two areas that many other sources also reference, namely addressing the scarcity of people with AI research and application skills and experience through growing the talent pool and making data more attainable for social impact cases through data collection and generator projects. MGI also provides a checklist for deploying AI solutions in the social sector, starting with the basics of clearly defining the problem, formulating the technical problem structure, alleviating the risks described above, and making sure of regulatory limitations, organization acceptance, efficient deployment, and technology accessibility, deploying AI solutions at scale with committed resources making sure of data availability, integration, accessibility, and quality, having AI practitioners that can properly train and test AI models using sufficient computing capacity, deploying AI models in the target environment that deliver adequate value to drive significant adoption by organization, and having the required technical capabilities in the organization to run and maintain AI solutions in sustainable fashion. This checklist is fairly generic and also relevant for development and deployment of AI solutions in the private and public sector more broadly. As a response to the vast changes in the global threat landscape, a report called The Malicious Use of Artificial Intelligence, Forecasting, Prevention and Mitigation by contributors from Oxford University, Future of Humanity Institute, Center for the Study of Existential Risk, Center for a New American Security, Electronic Frontier Foundation, OpenAI, Stanford University, University of Cambridge, and a number of other universities and organizations provided a general framework for AI and security threats, various scenarios and security domains within the digital, physical, and political security domains, a strategic analysis, and recommended interventions. They specifically highlight how the security threat landscape is affected by AI systems that inject new potential threats, broaden existing threats, and even change the typical nature of threats. Some specific high-level recommendations include a much tighter collaboration between policymakers and technical researchers about understanding, preventing, and alleviating the potential ill-natured and damaging AI use cases ensuring that stakeholders and domain experts from across the spectrum are involved in these discussions and helping to determine the best path forward. The identification of best practices and guidelines in research areas focused on dual-use concerns, where smart technology can specifically be misused in computer security. 
and AI practitioners and researchers should carefully consider the dual-use nature of their applications and research, making sure that their research priorities and standards are not affected and directed by misapplications and harmful use cases, and proactively alert the relevant people about such potential outcomes. In addition, they also advise on advancing a culture of responsibility, collaborative learning from and with the cybersecurity community, investigating current openness of research and publications in areas that might pose potential risk, and developing policy and technology-driven solutions to help drive towards a safer future where privacy is safeguarded and AI is used for common good and public good security. As it is clear that the challenges are formidable and the consequences are important not only in the security risk category, we need the participation of all stakeholders in the private and public sectors to act on these types of recommendations. A recent BBC article asks, what would it take for a global totalitarian government to rise to power indefinitely? And that this could be a horrendous outcome that could be worse than extinction. Totalitarianism refers to a governmental or political system where the state has complete authority and controls public and private life, and where opposition is outlawed. It is a more extreme form of authoritarianism where citizens blindly accept and comply with authority. Although a global totalitarian government still looks improbable, we already observe AI enabling a form of authoritarianism in a few countries and reinforcing infrastructure that could potentially be captured by a dictator or oppressor. So, this is a real and present danger. Apart from AI enhancing surveillance of citizens, it is also being used to spread online misinformation, propaganda and fabricated political messages in personalized fashion via social media. So how does one avoid these digital authoritarian scenarios? Apart from solutions mentioned above, the execution of goals linked to the proposed MTP for Humanity would clearly be preventative steps in the right direction as the focus is on building a decentralized and community-based city-state civilization with self-optimized governance and a more elastic, dynamic and direct democracy which is diametrically opposed to centralized control and digital authoritarianism. Tucker Davy from the Future of Life Institute strongly recommends that we make a decision about what are acceptable and unacceptable uses of AI and that we need to be careful about letting it control so much of our infrastructure. He states that we are already on the wrong track if we are arming police with facial recognition and the federal government is collecting all of our data. Can we steer AI towards positive outcomes? Can we advance AI in a way that is most likely going to benefit humanity as a whole and help solve some of our most pressing real-world problems? Can we shape AI to be an extension of individual human wills and as broadly and evenly distributed as possible? The answer is yes to all these questions. If society approaches AI with an open mind, the technologies emerging from the field could profoundly transform society for the better in the coming decades. Like other technologies, AI has the potential to be used for good or criminal purposes. A robust and knowledgeable debate about how to best steer AI in ways that enrich our lives and our society is an urgent and vital need. It is incumbent on all of us to make sure we are building a world in which every individual has an opportunity to thrive. As also discussed in previous chapters, it is likely that the future of AI will impact our everyday life through automating transportation, enhancing us with cyborg technology, taking over dangerous jobs, helping to address or potentially solve climate change providing robots or AI agents as friends, and improving elder care. Stanford University's The 100-Year Study on Artificial Intelligence highlights substantial increases in the future uses of AI applications, including more self-driving cars, healthcare diagnostics and targeted treatment, and physical assistance for elder care. Though quality education will likely always require active engagement by human teachers, 
AI promises to enhance education at all levels, especially by providing personalization at scale. AI will increasingly enable entertainment that is more interactive, personalized, and engaging. Research should be directed toward understanding how to leverage these attributes for individuals' and society's benefit. With targeted incentives and funding priorities, AI could help address the needs of low-resource communities. In the longer term, AI may be thought of as a radically different mechanism for wealth creation, in which everyone should be entitled to a portion of the world's AI-produced treasures. The measure of success for AI applications is the value they create for human lives. Misunderstandings about what AI is and is not could fuel opposition to technologies with the potential to benefit everyone. Poorly informed regulation that stifles innovation would be a terrible mistake. Going forward, the ease with which people use and adapt to AI applications will likely largely determine their success. Society is now at a crucial juncture in determining how to deploy AI-based technologies in ways that promote rather than hinder democratic values such as freedom, equality and transparency. Machine intelligence already pervades our lives and will likely replace tasks rather than jobs in the near term and will also create new kinds of jobs. However, the new jobs that will emerge are harder to imagine in advance than the existing jobs that will likely be lost.